Hi friends, I'm Gio, and welcome to my channel. I write gay fiction for fun, and this story is called Drive. Let's begin. There is nothing I dislike more than standing in a line, especially long lines, especially long lines in the middle of the sweltering summer heat in Vegas on a Friday. The air conditioning did not keep up. I wasn't the only one sweating in here. Everybody else was, too. And it wasn't because of the road test. Oh, crap. This was a long, not moving line. There must be 50 people ahead of me. Welcome to the DMV. White walls, dark desks, multiple operators sitting at computers slowly helping each person. I screwed up. It's been a year since I was supposed to mail in my driver's license renewal. I was busy, lost the paper, and forgot about it. Until I applied for a pizza delivery job last week, my future boss looked at my license and laughed. I not only have to pay a fine and retake the driver's license test, I also have to redo my road test. That means driving with an examiner on board, judging my every move. Am I the world's biggest ditz? If I had done this last month, I could have gone online, mailed in some papers, and I'd be done. I'd only have to pay a fine, and it wouldn't have taken all day. I'm Jeff Hardy, age 22. I started driving when I was 15 and a half, got my real license when I was 16 and a half. Nevada requires renewal every four years, online, and every eight years to get your picture taken. It's not a big deal, unless you forget to renew. Finally, I made it to the front of the line. I handed the lady my papers, my expired license, and she squinted at me through her bifocals. Welcome to the DMV, she said in the most boring voice possible. She typed the information from the papers into her computer. Did you bring your car? It's a red truck and it's outside, I said, and mentally kicked myself. Of course my truck would be outside. Mr. Hardy, you're late for your assigned time. You'll have to wait for the next available opening she said. It's not my fault. I was stuck in line, I mumbled. The woman glanced at all the people. Next time, you'll know better. Take a seat under the sign by the left wall. You are number 354, and your examiner will call you shortly. Then you'll return here, pay all applicable fees and fines, and will issue you a temporary license while the real one is mailed to you. Any questions? Number 354? What number are we on? I asked. She gave me a wicked little smile and said, Next. I'll be here all afternoon, I said. Maybe not, number 354. We've called in someone to help with the driving examinations, so I hope you won't be here too long. Move on, please, she said handing me some papers and pointed to some chairs in a different part of the room. I took a seat where she indicated and tried to think of this as a fun experience. I wasn't having fun. About 15 minutes later, somebody yelled, Applicant, 354. Pull your car up to the side of the building. Your examiner is waiting. At last, I said, and ran for my truck. It was time to get this over with. As I climbed behind the wheel of my old red Ford truck, I flicked the small rainbow peace sign hanging from the rearview mirror. It was for luck, because I think I'll need it. I was sweating this one, literally and figuratively. I pulled the truck up to the side of the building and turned the truck off. Could my shoulders get any tenser? The examiner walked around the truck, making notes on a clipboard. It wasn't a regular instructor. It was a police officer. 
He was a couple of years older than me, taller than me, better looking than me, was in better shape than me. I mean, look at his arms. And when he glanced at me, I fell into immediate lust. Then I went into immediate scared-to-death teen mode. Was I nervous and sweating before? Yes. It was even more now. I sweated buckets in that nervous twitch your stomach gets right before you ask somebody out. Oh boy, was it twitching. He said something into his two-way radio that I couldn't hear and nodded. He knelt down in front of one of my headlights. I couldn't see what he was doing. A second glance my way and he jotted something down as he rose to his feet. Why did I get a police officer? What was he inspecting? Obviously, because I'd been driving on an expired license for a year. In Nevada, that could be jail time or even a thousand dollar fine. Why had I waited so long to do this? The officer made further notes, then walked over to the passenger side door and climbed in. He had short blonde hair and blue eyes, and his skin was tanned from being in the sun so much. If we had been at a bar or a restaurant or some party and he was in normal clothes, I'd still have been too scared to ask him out. He ruffled through the papers on his clipboard and finally said, Jeff Hardy, age 22, license renewal. I take it you let it expire? My mouth went dry and I had to swallow before I spoke. Yes, sir, officer, sir. He gave me a little smile that both melted my heart and terrified me. I'll be your examiner today. I'm Officer Nelson, and let's start simple. Buckle up. Crap, I hadn't fastened my seatbelt. I quickly wrapped it around me and clicked it. Good. Now, Jeff, take us to the main road and turn right, Officer Nelson said. Yes, sir, I said, and reached for the keys in the ignition. Somehow... I fumbled with them, and they fell onto the floor with a metallic clunk. I stared down, trying to see them, but couldn't. I reached to the floor, feeling for them. The seat belt prevented me from bending too far over. Where had my keys landed? I couldn't find them. I looked at Officer Nelson, at the way his eyebrows lowered, and the quick mark he made on the clipboard. I wasn't making a very good impression. I undid the seat belt opened the door, and climbed out. The keys had fallen almost under the seat. I grabbed them, climbed back into the truck, closed the door, and started the truck. I put it into gear and slowly drove to the road. Fasten your seat belt, please, Officer Nelson said. Sorry, I jammed on the brakes, bringing us to a neck-lurching stop. I fumbled with the seat belt and fastened it, I'm not going to pass if I can't go more than ten feet. Officer Nelson made another mark on the clipboard. Jeff, look at me. Don't be so nervous. I'm not a scary person. Now my grandma, she's a scary person. You have nothing to be afraid of. I bet we have a lot in common. Tell me about this. Officer Nelson tapped the rainbow peace sign. I gave a quick, polite, terrified smile. Would he understand? Me and a group of friends were at the Pride Parade last June, and I bought it as a souvenir to remind me of all the fun we had. Pride Parade. I've never been to one. Back home we didn't have them. Too small of a town, Officer Nelson said. You're gay too, I blurted out. See, we have something in common already. So relax, Officer Nelson smiled. Think of it as simply taking your boyfriend on a tour of the town. Except that this boyfriend can take my license away, I said. Officer Nelson chuckled. This boyfriend will if you don't start driving. We drove and Officer Nelson gave various commands. Go left, go right, stop, drive to the highway, merge. Don't you usually have your own car? Why are you at the DMV today, I asked bike, actually. Something was wrong with the electrical systems, so it's in the shop. Rather than give me the day off, and since the DMV needed help, Captain called in a favor and sent me here. I think he was trying to get even with me, Officer Nelson said. Even? 
Why? I asked. We ordered Chinese takeout last week, and there was a mix-up, and I sort of accidentally ate the captain's before I realized it wasn't mine. It was good, he said. Oops, I said, and gave a nervous chuckle. Oops is right, but I'm only here until I get my cycle working again, he said. Next objective. Do you see that row of cars over there? Time to parallel park. You have to be kidding. I'm no good at that, I said. Then consider this practice, Officer Nelson said. Why did he want me to parallel park? I opened the window, looked about, and took several seconds driving forward and back, forward and back, inching my truck into the space. Once I had, Officer Nelson stepped out of the truck and walked around. Once again, he made several marks on the clipboard. There was another problem. I liked the way he looked in his uniform. With a chest like that, Officer Nelson had to work out, and the way he scrunched his eyebrows together as he concentrated, it made him even sexier. He also didn't wear a ring on his finger. The man wasn't taken. If I hadn't been so intimidated by him, I'd ask him out to drinks, right now, on the spot. You're doing fine, Officer Nelson said as he climbed into the truck. Next, I want you to drive around for a few minutes, take some random streets, but generally head back to the DMV. I pulled into the suburbs, then onto a main street. I can't believe I had the weirdest idea. Why not have a little bit of fun? Gordon's Gourmet Burgers was just around the corner. Better yet, nobody was in line at the drive through I pulled through the line and up to the call box. Gordon's Gourmet Burgers, home of the nuclear cholesterol bomb, may I take your order? Some anonymous guy said. What are you doing? Officer Nelson said to me. Willfully committing bribery and flagrantly flirting with an officer of the law. What do you want for a very late lunch? I said, trying to look as innocent as possible. It's your crime, but we do have to head back soon. Officer Nelson said, but he smiled. Two Gordon special cheeseburgers and two chocolate ice cream cones, I said. Would you like fries with that? The voice said. Make them large, I said. Pull forward, please, the voice said. We picked up the food, and as I was about to park, Officer Nelson got a call on his two way radio. Next appointment is here. Where are you? We both groaned and I headed back to the DMV. Once there, I let Officer Nelson take the sack and he gave me some papers. Take these to the lady by the computer by the door. You passed, he said. I did? Thank you, I said. You didn't have to buy me food. You'd already made it, he said. It made it more fun. You should come to the next Pride Parade with us. Until the next time I get to flagrantly flirt with you, Officer Nelson. See you around, I said. I'd like that. See you around, Jeff, and call me Sean. I went through the final line, received my temporary license, and was set for the next four years. If I didn't forget again. If I did, could I see Sean again? Nope. Today was a one-time-only thing. A fun one, too. There are about 3,000 cops in the Vegas metro area, so what are the odds I'd run into Officer Nelson again? pretty slim. If I knew which precinct he belonged to, I could send a letter. I didn't know, but I would like to see him again. I'd send him a letter care of the DMV. How old-fashioned, but sometimes the old ways work better than the new ones. After all, how many Sean Nelsons could there be? I kept it short. Hey, Sean, thanks for the driving test. I really enjoyed it, especially when we went out to eat. I'd like to do it again sometime. How about next Wednesday? Gordon's Gourmet Burgers, 1 o'clock. I'm buying. Signed, Jeff Hardy, and I included my phone number and address. I mailed it to the DMV. Nothing to do but wait. By Tuesday, I hadn't heard anything. Wednesday, 
I still showed up at Gordon's Gourmet Burgers on the off chance he'd be there. But by 1.30, he still hadn't showed. I ordered a burger and fries and took them out front to sit at one of the benches and slowly ate until two. Either Sean didn't get my letter or the fun we had last Friday was a one-time only event. He didn't want to come. I was driving away when a police motorcycle showed up in my rearview mirror. Pulling to the side of the road, I rolled down my window and placed my hands on the steering wheel and waited. I knew I wasn't speeding, but maybe one of my taillights were out. At least my license was up to date. A man climbed off the cycle, pulling a small notebook from his pocket. He walked toward me. Was he writing me a ticket? Hello, Jeff Hardy. We meet again, Sean said, smiling. I promise I wasn't speeding, and I have my temporary license with me, Officer Nelson, I said, also smiling. He wrote something on a paper and handed it to me. Like I said before, call me Sean. I got your letter about ten minutes ago and hurried over. Since lunch didn't work out, how about dinner, say, Saturday night? My turn to buy. You ever try shawarma? The paper he had given me had his phone number and address on it. Seven sound good to you? I asked. Sean's smile held a hint of something sexy, and he said, Seven is fine. Now that you can legally be behind the wheel, why don't you drive? The end. Thanks for joining me and sharing this story. If you get a moment, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. I'll see you next Wednesday. Peace.